Hey, hello everyone and welcome uh, to our uh, first lab uh, as an online lab. Technically, it's, uh, technically it's lab number five. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to create a new account on uh, multisim.com uh, so you can uh, build a circuit uh, online using the software multisim and you can modify it, uh, add uh, as many components as you want um, and to verify uh, things we already did in the lab. So first, so let's go to multisim.com. I'll share the link with you uh, later. So first we need to sign up in this account, create a new account. So here we have the option, sign up. If you already have uh, a username and password to this software, you can go to login immediately. So let's go with the sign up. <clears throat> so here is going to ask you about, uh, let's say, a nickname. So for me, I'm going to use temp user. Uh, here, I suggest everyone put your actual name or your, uh, your real name or some initials for each one of you. Now, first name, okay, my last name. Now, my, the role will be, you guys are students, I believe, so let's see if there is a student. There it goes, that's the student option. Now, school, you put Abu Dhabi Polytechnic. Uh, graduation date, you just put an estimate. So I'm gonna put May 2022. Now for here, the email address is a very important field. This is where you, uh, the website is gonna send you a verification link to identify let's say, your identity. So I created for my case, a dummy email at yahoo.com. And this one, I suggest each one of you use your AD Poly email. Use your actual school email. Now for the password, it's not the email password, just put any password here. So I'm gonna put some password I feel fine to use. So as long as uh, the strength is fair, it should be okay. Create an account. So let's see if everything works fine. Still is running. Okay, so it will ask me the option to save the username and password. I highly suggest each one of you do that because some of you might forget the password. So save. Now it says that it sent an email to identify my identity. So I'll go and check my email. Yeah, this process sometimes it takes a while for some students. Uh, some of you students get it uh, real quick, this confirmation email. Some make they uh, may take uh, days to get the confirmation email so here i immediately got the email so please confirm your ni user and this is the link so copy it i'm gonna go back to my original browser open a new tab paste and go and i should be good to go there we go the user has been created so oh, there's no need for this one here. There we go. So we are done. Now what to do? Again, go back to multisim.com. Now here you go to login. We already did the email setup. Uh, this one is I have it uh, already stored. Temp user, but let's say I don't have it. Login with a different account. So there you go, I already saved the data here. My email, temp.user85 at yahoo.com. It's gonna be the email uh, you guys uh, did and probably it should be adpoly email and the password. Uh, here, stay logged in or not, it's up to you. So log in. Let's see if everything works fine, it will open. Okay, so this website, uh, this uh, information here. So we have free account. And this one, if you have the software, then you need to do it for the premium, let's say for the desktop. We don't need this one. We don't need this activation and all other stuff. Actually, those all information here you can ignore. 
all what we need to do is create circuit. And yeah, just to remember, uh, just to enforce a point here, Elias, put your, let's say your real name, edit profile and NI, and you can modify it through this point here. Yeah, I think all the rest here, just because this is the first time we did it, so it's no big deal. So create circuit. So it will start opening our virtual environment. And there you go. So let's talk about it uh, real quick. So this is the space where I will put all the elements. This is the main window here. And you can zoom in and zoom out by scrolling the mouse up and down. And on the left side here is the most important part here where I have all the components that I need to build a circuit. And there are many actually. Here's just because I'm having a small screen. I don't see the rest, but there are some other components that's below. But for this circuit, we just need, let's apply Ohm's law, for example. All I need is a power supply and a resistor. So to get a power supply, actually if you put your mouse at each, uh, let's say, uh, icon here, you will get some uh, explanation. So this one is for analysis and annotations. This one is schematic connection, connectors. This is sources. Resist, uh, passive components. It includes resistors and uh, capacitors and the uh, inductors. For this experiment, all I need is a power supply, a source, and a resistor. So we'll go here to the supply. And some of uh, you, most of you are already familiar with the DC voltage supply. This is the AC voltage supply. So throughout uh, this, let's say, course, we're gonna need only DC supply and AC voltage supply. That's all what we need. The rest, that's for advanced topics. So I need a DC power supply, just click, and you can put it anywhere you want. Now, once you click at any spot, it'll give you these options here. Now this one is just, you want to have a mirror image of it, left, right. So it does not, uh, does not do anything. Here, if you, let's say you add a component by mistake, you just delete it. Here, if you have this one here, if you have multiple components, let's say multiple power supplies, you just duplicate. So instead of making copy every once in a while, so you can copy it immediately. And this one here is just to, for rotation. So yeah, just let's click rotation and you see it's clockwise rotation. Okay, so once I'm done with the power supply, now what I can do here, just double click and you'll see this menu appear to your right. So all what we need here is the V1, that's the label ID. So let's call it just V because I have only one supply. So just notice here, I have it as V1. Once I click V, it will change. So there you go, I have only V. Now what is the voltage you require? Let's say here, I want five volts. Click and there you go. And all this information already appeared next to the schematic symbol of the power supply. Now I need a resistor. So let's click on the passive components. So we have resistor, capacitor, inductor. That's all the commonly used components. And that's what we used actually throughout the semester. Uh, the rest, they are not of importance. So let's say I need a resistor. Okay, so I put a resistor. Now it's good to make a rotation. And again, let's change it to R instead of R1. And let's say I want it uh, two ohms. I know it's not a practical value, but two ohms, just for a matter of illustration. And there we go. Now to connect these components, I need connection wires. You don't have to add connection wires by, let's say, let's, so let's zoom at this point here. Now I want to connect the voltage to R. Now once I put here, now see how the symbol of the mouse changed So once I have it like this, that means that I can connect with wires. Now once I click, now notice, it's not dragging, just a single click, and I can move this wire. And the instant I put it next to that one, now see, this circuit is like a sniper hitting its target. There it goes. That means that I'm connecting to this terminal. So click, and there you go. You have the wire connected. Now, don't worry about this number one. This is a label that means like uh, wire number one. Uh, in order to change the dimensions, you can just drag, and you can change the length of the wire. Similarly, we can connect to the other component here. Again, and there you go, the sniper sign. And there you go, that's wire number two. The X here means deleting the wire. Okay, so I have 
uh, a full circuit. However, it's very important here in simulations uh, to show where the ground is. The ground is pretty much like what we did, what we do in the lab. That's uh, let's say pin number forty-nine. That we need a ground. So this is my source. Oh, I need the ground. I better go. That's the ground. And usually it's next to the negative terminal of the source. The ground, so here I'm having my source, that's the negative terminal. The ground is always next to the negative terminal. And there we go. So I have a fully functional circuit. I have a supply, I have connection wires, I have a resistor, and I have a ground. Now to measure the current, now we need measurement devices. Now you see here, that's for analysis and annotations once you click on it. So there are multi, uh, many options here. Now to measure current, all I need is this one. You just need one connection. So click on it and you see how the say the current direction. So if I put it in this way that I'm measuring the current that's going out of the source. There we go, because we know from Ohm's law uh, or from let's say electron theory that current will be going from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal passing through the circuit. So the direction of the current will be going out of the power supply. Now, sometimes in uh, some instances, you may face like a negative current. So let me do the same thing. There we go. So both of them should be the same value because it's, it's only a single current. But current A is going from left to the right. Uh, sorry, that's the ammeter, it's not current A, that's the ammeter. Or let's, say, let's call it the green uh, multimeter, showing the current going from left to right. The blue ammeter is doing the same. However, I know from the circuit analysis, current will be going through this path. So my other ammeter here, my multimeter, is measuring the current, but it's taking the opposite direction. So I will assume a negative value here. Here I'm assuming a positive value. They're both gonna have the same magnitude because it's just a single, single circuit, a single loop. It has only one current. Now that's it, actually the circle is done. Uh, this one wire zero, meaningless, uh, forget about the labels. As I mentioned, one and two and they're just IDs. So let's not worry about them. Uh, PR1, that means that's probe number one, and this is probe number two. That's the measurement device. So how to run the circuit? You see here at the upper left, at the upper left side, this arrow, it means run the simulation. Now once I run the simulation, I'm expecting to see the value of the current from Ohm's law. The current will be V over R, five over two, it's gonna be 2.5 ampere. So once we click run, and there we go. And you notice here, this is the time going. You know, forget about the values, it's not very accurate in terms of seconds. Uh, we don't worry about it actually. So yeah, PR1, that's the probe number one, is giving me the current, it's 2.5 ampere. PR2 is giving me the same value. However, because I know my current direction is the, uh, at the opposite, it's negative 2.5 ampere. And that's pretty much it for measuring a current in a circuit. Now notice, while the simulation is running, you cannot add any components. It's pretty much like the safety measurement we do in the lab. Like when, in order, when, let's say when you have the powers on and you're doing your measurements, it's recommended not to add any components. That's pretty much the same here. So to stop the simulation, you just need to click and you can do the rest here. And yeah, that's the basic thing. That's today's experiment. And that's just for measuring the current in a single loop circuit with Ohm's law. Uh, one point here, if I want to measure the voltage of a resistor. Now it makes a lot of sense to measure a voltage. You probably assume that's the voltage, that's the measurement voltage. However, when you add the voltage, remember we need to add the reference. And that's the V minus here. That's the reference probe. Remember what we did the last week in the experiment? So to measure the voltage, I have the two probes connected in parallel with the resistor. So this is the same thing. Whenever I want to measure the voltage, so I use the voltage probe here. And once I click on the point, there's the V minus will appear. And there we go. Now here, I will take only the voltage of this resistor. If I don't do this one, I might get, especially when we deal later with the KVL circuits, 
I might get some misleading results. Now, to run the circuit again, I will. I know that the voltage here is going to be five volts, and there we go. That's the result, as expected. Now, once we are done, let's say I done. I'm done with the circuit, and I want to do the submission. So I want. I'm expecting two ways of submission, and I want them both actually. One of them is a screenshot of this circuit, and you can get it easily from here. Export, and I want the schematic image. So schematic image. So let's assume I have it at the downloads and type the circuit that's in PNG. Now I'll go to my downloads folder. And there you go, untitled, double click. And there you go, that's the circuit. Uh, yeah, I'm expecting some cleanup, like a crop that part here. Um, some, yeah, for some reason I'm getting the values here. So I say in order to be the, say, the safe side, take a screenshot, just print screen and crop that part of the circuit. Now the other part is the link to your profile. Now by the link to your profile, you go back here, let's see, go to my circuits. Uh, let's say I don't want to save it. So discard everything here, my circuits. So this is, the page I'm expecting for each student to submit. So multi-sim, and there you go, that's my circuits. Best computer, that's my username, my circuits. And in here, I'm expecting for everybody to have their circuits. Yeah, the circuit I built since I discarded it, it does not show up here. But uh, I'll show you like in a few seconds, like how my circuits will look like. So I'm gonna open my actual profile. Okay, it's logging out, log in. Okay, so I'm not, I'm gonna use my actual profile. And then this is my profile and here are my circuits. That's my latest circuits. So view all, I was gonna change my URL and there we go. So each circuit will be saved, automatically saved, and you can have as many circuits as you want. Uh, so let's say for fun, let's say show you this circuit here. That was lab number 10, a uh, couple of semesters ago. Uh, one thing here, that's the nickname that I mentioned. And again, I suggest everybody, that's the alias, everybody use your real name. This one is my username, but for everybody, please use your real name. No, uh, let's say, uh, uh, meaningless uh, usernames. And open circuit. And that's how I can access your work. So again, I need the URL of the user and a screenshot of the circuit. Yeah, probably the circuit because it was old, uh, it's been deleted. Yeah, that's what I see, it's been deleted. And yeah, that's it. So this is a tutorial on how to create uh, a new lab on multi, or sorry, a new circuit on multisim and show you a guideline of submission. Uh, please follow the details on the work file that I'm gonna share in the shared folder. And I wish you all uh, to say good day. And yeah, please, for any inquiries, any messages, send me an email or to stay in touch over Telegram for any inquiries in regarding this. Uh, drawing circuits is gonna be really fun. It's different from the lab. We can do as, let's say, as much analysis as we want. And this one is just this basic one. It's introductory, it's just Ohm's law. And uh, the next lab will be uh, a more detailed. It's gonna cover series parallel and series parallel circuits all together. So I'm gonna stop recording.